guys, welcome back to A Level Lessons Online. All right, we're going to be looking at balance of payments today. Um, it's going to be like a three part series. Okay, I'm going to be starting off with the different components of uh, balance of payments, after which, I'll go on to the causes uh, in which, like, a deficit, a balance of payment deficit is caused. And then, lastly, we'll look at the consequences of a balance of payment deficit. Um, or surplus. All right. So this first part, we're going to be looking at the components of uh, balance of payment. So it's quite a lengthy video, I feel, uh, because there's actually quite a few components you need to know when it comes to what makes up the balance of payments. All right. So what is the definition of balance of payments to begin with? So it records basically um, all economic transactions that, that occurs between a country as well as the rest of the world during a given period of time. So it essentially is a record of all the various economic tra transactions. So basically anything that is flowing into the country as well as out of the country towards the rest of the entire world um, that is basically being recorded uh, given, of course, a specific period of time. So there are two forms okay, um, in which balance of payments can occur. Definitely when you come in, is going to be uh, in the form of, let's say, earnings or that you're in the form of um, imports, right? So when you hit out, when your money goes out of the country, it kind of like is um, in the form of paying another country. So which is why there are two forms. We call it payments and receipts. Right? Payments are also known as expenditures and receipts are also known as earnings. So payments is anything that goes out of the country, right? It is an expenditure. You're paying for something outside of the country, um, meaning to save your own economy and then receipts right think of it like when you pay for something the the cashier gives you a receipt it means that it is yours it has kind of like entered into you right you now have that good or service in your possession so that's why it is uh it could be in the form of earnings as well um when your country makes money right that is known as a receipt so it's coming into your economy so the accounting system right if, if uh you guys may ever come across this would be the also known as credit and debit um, items. So credit items, it's items that allows a country to gain foreign earnings, right? So it's similar to your receipts, right? Whereby there is money inflow. So when you credit an item, it means that it comes into your country. Um, this is the accounting uh, side of things. So some of you guys may not understand it. It's fine. You can just skip this part. You don't have to know. Um, but if for those of you guys who are interested, uh, when you debit um, an item, okay, it basically means that there is money outflow. Right, so um, this is kind of like your credit cards, that that uh, um, that form of understanding. So when you debit items, it means that items require foreign exchange payment to other foreign country. Uh, there is going to be money outflow of your own economy instead. So basic ones, okay, just take note of the payments and receipts. Right, this is the main part that's important, your expenditure and your earnings payment receipts. That is all that is really important for this part on um the inflow and outflow of balance of payments. So there are three different accounts we're going to be going through, which has got all of the various um, sub-components. So it has got your current account, your capital account, and your financing account. So I'm going to go through it one by one. Um, I would, um, I mean, it would be great if you guys can follow along, right? So that you guys understand fully what these different accounts um, actually entail, right? So what do they consist of? So the current account. Firstly, it records imports and exports of currently produced goods and services and unilateral transfers. Okay, we'll go through what these are later on. So it reflects the international competitiveness of an economy. So there are two trade accounts. Basically, there's going to be the visible trade account and the invisible trade account. So visible trade account would contain goods that are tangible, right? So essentially, when you look at the current account, we're looking at currently in this present time, right, in the short term. What are the goods and services that are being traded? So what are the goods and services that are being imported as well as those that are being exported, right? And those would mean um, that this, this bunch, this basket of goods and services is what will make up the current account, right? On top of that, you have got unilateral transfers. It's basically um, invisible transfers, right? We'll see the, the exact definition in the next slide, which um, for the visible trade account first, um, it consists, right, it measures the value of export and imports of goods only. So we're only looking at tangible goods. For example, if your economy um, decides to trade, let's say, um, Nike shoes, right? So we import Nike shoes. There's going to be um, Nike shoes, let's say 500 Nike shoes that are coming into our country. This will be registered under the visible trade account, 
So if we export, let's say, 300 Adidas shoes, that will also be registered in our visible current trade account. So the balance of trade, for those of you guys who may come across this term BOT, it is the value of the visible exports minus the valuable of the visible imports. Right, so this will show you the balance of trade. Right? Are we trading, if there's a surplus, it means that we are trading more exports than imports. If there's a deficit, it means that there are more imports that are coming into the economy than the exports which are going out in our visible trade account. So that's the next point <coughs> that I've just mentioned, the surplus and the deficit. So we're basically simply looking at the value of export and imports, and that is all we're looking at. So anything that is visible, meaning to say that it is tangible, um, for example, if you're trading cars, you're trading um, um, fans, you're trading uh, shoes, clothes. These are all tangible goods that are registered in your current um, account under the visible trade account. So next one will be your invisible trade account. So it records the receipts from the, the provision of services to overseas and locals. So there are three items in the visible account. Services, so definitely um, any sort of service. For example, uh, if you have got firms overseas that are tendering certain um, services, right? this would basically fall under the invisible trade account. You have got interest, profits, and dividends. So from investments abroad, right? if there are people trading your stocks, for example, and they are... Um, there's interest that's being incurred or bonds that are being incurred uh, where interest is incurred that is going into your economy this would come under your invisible trade account and last one is unilateral transfers so these are one way and they do not involve any economic transactions so examples could be let's say just very simply transferring money um, from let's say your friend in Spain transfers money to you in let's say Africa so that would be a unilateral transfer. It is one way. Uh, you're not going to transfer back that money. Maybe he owes you money from previously, uh, but he is now in another country. So this will all be registered under your invisible trade account. So these are the three main items, services, interest, profits, dividends, as well as your unilateral transfers. All right, so the current account makes up of the invisible and the visible trade account. So it will be visible trade account plus your invisible trade account plus any form of net transfers. So these are basically extra transfers that may not already be registered in your invisible or your visible trade account. So this could be very possible. It could be um, any sort of uh, um, money that is just being um, transferred hands uh, in between your economies um, that has that does not fall into a single category so this will fall under your net transfers so this will all make up the current account balance all right next one is going to be your capital account so capital account as the name suggests it's going to be account registering the inflow and outflow of capital so it records the inflows and outflows of capital in exchange for assets. So this is the by the book definition. Essentially, your capital account will only consist of two types of capital flows. It's going to be your long-term capital flows and your short-term capital flows. So we'll go through what these two capital flows are. This is the part where a lot of students tend to get mixed up and they are unsure on what um, capital flows are. So make sure you pay attention and hopefully it clarifies any sort of doubts um, that you may have later on. So long-term capital flows are basically going to be um, occurring when foreigners purchase or invest in productive resources. So this is key, productive resources and assets in a domestic economy. So these can come in the form of portfolio investments. So let's say you purchase or you sell bonds, patents, trademarks, um, stocks, shares, right? These are all basically going to be portfolio investments for more than a year. So you're holding for more than a year, it would fall under your long-term capital flows. Okay, if not, you could also have direct investments. So these are real physical assets. So it affects productive capacity and AS, such as investments by firms. So for example, plants, factories, commercial buildings, um, any sort of uh, vehicles that you are investing for the long run, right? These are actual assets that, um, actual capital that would be founded in that domestic economy that you're investing in and you plan to keep it there for the long term. So for example, if you set up a factory, right, you're going to be employing people, these are going to be providing jobs, these are investments, they are long-term capital flows, right, because it is in the form of investing in a factory, a physical building, you're investing in the people who are working there as well. So these are long-term capital flows, they are real physical assets, or either that any form of portfolio investments that um, a country 
or it could just be a foreigner who invests in your domestic economy plans to keep for the long run. So on the other hand, you have got short-term capital flows. These are also known as hot money flows. So the reason why they are known as hot money flows is because think of it like the money is on fire and you can't hold it for very long. You have to keep um, trading it or keep um, giving it to someone else. right? So this is when um, in the short run, right, capital flows in the form of money, for example, um, just runs into the economy and gets out it's very, very fast. So within the day, it can leave the economy. Within a week, it can leave the economy. So it includes things like bank deposits, short-term loans, treasury bills, and it's very volatile on a daily basis. So what happens is that when you have called hot money flows, right, these short-term capital flows, um, there's a lot of fast trading that's occurring um, instantaneously in your economy. So for example, if a foreigner overseas decides to put down a bank deposit in your economy, in one of your banks, right? That is where they will instantly transfer you, let's say, three hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? This money comes into your economy as a hot money flow, right? It's a short-term capital flow, and let's say on that day itself, they decide, okay, now I'm gonna withdraw this money again, uh, and maybe pay for something that is in your economy. So that would be where. Um, the economy, let's say from a family member that is in that domestic economy, withdraws that three hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. It is very very fast. Right? It's a short term capital flow. It's moved in and moved out very very quickly. So essentially, if you ever get confused, short term capital flows are anything that is um, invested into a country in the short run. It comes into the economy very very quickly, right? In the short run, and um, it usually comes in the form of money. Right. On the other hand, long-term capital flows tend to come in the form of physical assets, so buildings, infrastructure, um, whereby these are meant to stay for the long run and it can generate efficiency or it can generate a return for the economy um, um, over a period of time, Okay, over the long run. So that would be the difference between your long-term capital flows and your short-term capital flows. Last one would be our official financing account. This is not as important as the two current account and uh, I mean the two accounts, your current account and your capital account. Uh, but just take note as well. Okay, the financing account is usually required when the balance of payment is in this equilibrium, right? When a balance of payment is in this equilibrium, okay, we'll learn in the next video. Right, it usually occurs when let's say your exports are more than imports, or when your imports are less than your exports. Okay, we'll see more of it on how a deficit or disequilibrium can occur. But essentially, just take note first that this is something that it can help to balance everything out very nicely. Okay, make it back to a nice, stable state. Um, so it is the accumulation or reduction of official reserves, right? Like the name suggests, it is a financing account. So it finances um, the problem, right? Let's say if there's a bad debt that's going on or when there's something that is, um, um, there's a surplus that's occurring, okay, it helps to reduce or increase the amount of funding that is in the economy. So and there's a balance of payment surplus, okay, there will be an increase in the foreign exchange reserves or repayment of loans to IMF. We mean to say that money will leave the country. So it helps to reduce this balance of payment surplus. Okay, it helps to balance it out, make it stable and healthy again. On the other hand, if there's a deficit, there will be a decrease in your forex reserves or borrowing from IMF to ensure that this deficit is well financed. So think of it like this financing account is essentially um when you have a cup. And let's say the cup is filled with water, but it's not sufficient. This uh, financing account would simply just automatically top up to a certain level in the cup. And that will, that's all it will do. Okay, but at the same time, if it's overflowing, the pipe will also be inside to suck out water at the same time to ensure that your cup is always at the same um, level at all times. Alright, so that would be your financing account. If not, that would actually be all for this entire video. Okay, we're going to be coming down to our exam requirements now. So very simply for this entire chapter, you just need to be able to explain the various components of a balance of payment. So what is the current account? What is the capital account? What it consists of the current account and what consists of the capital account? Okay, your long-term capital flows and your short-term capital flows. And then after that, also make sure you understand what the financing account can help when there is a balance of payment this equilibrium. Right? This equilibrium means that there could be a deficit or there could be a surplus. So just be able to apply these components of balance of payments to any sort of related questions where required. So you would notice, apologies on that, you would notice that when it comes to your um, future uh, um, next two videos, right? We're going to be going through here, balance of payment, deficit, what are the causes and the consequences is where you would see the various accounts um, be 
specifically um, addressed, right? How is the balance of payment deficit going to be caused by the current account, by the capital account, right? We'll see those in the next few videos. So make sure you stay tuned and be sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video if you did learn something and um, if you are ready to stay for the next two videos that are going to be coming out um, on our balance of payment deficits. And I think those will be very, very useful for you. It's a very important chapter. I think it's the most important out of all um, in terms of your macro goals, right? your inflation, your economic growth. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. And I would um, be releasing those very, very soon as well. If not, if any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them too. If not, that is all I have for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.